This week in space exploration, lots of things happen. We have the, the Chinese government that has sent a rocket into space to go to the moon. It was yesterday on May 3rd. If you go into the news, you'll see the launch. It's a 53-day mission to go to the moon to, on the far side of the moon on the South Pole where they want to land and they want to be able to get some samples from the moon and bring them back. They're looking to bring back two kilograms of uh, soil or some rocks. So let's see what we can get from the NASA. It's always good to get some information and in what other countries are doing in science. So let's see. So this is from NASA. It's called the Chang'e Chang 6, and I apologize for the pronunciation I've been practicing. So yesterday, May 3rd, they did the launch. Interestingly enough, it's quite heavy. It is like an 8,200 kilogram launch uh, mass. And here the landed mass, what they're hoping to land on the moon is 3,200 kilograms. In the last few years, last few decades, uh, the Chinese have been sending to the moon on the far side um, different uh, pieces of equipment to gather data. They sent, uh, let's see, we're gonna, in a moment we'll see, they sent a few years back and they got 1.7 kilograms of soil with the Chang'e 5 mission. And they just keep expanding what they can do. It's quite amazing. And on top of that, I know that a few years ago, they did send an orbiting uh, communication satellite because knowing they do work on the far side of the moon, it allows information from the far side to go through that communication uh, satellite back to us on Earth. It's quite amazing. So let's see, let's see, let's see. So as I mentioned, they, are, they want to collect about two kilograms of material. And on top of that, I was reading that they have a drill where they want to go and sample rocks as deep as two meters deep which is good because the solar wind is affecting the surface of the moon. It will help us to get for the first time the pristine rocks from on the ground. I think this is quite exciting. And it is an international mission. I know that the French, uh, the, uh, with uh, so in, the, in France, they have a little piece of equipment to look at the ra radon content on the surface of the moon. So here, if you're looking at the, the Chinese, Chinese Lunar Exploration Program, you will see you can see they have a table here. So they started to be more active in 2007. And you'll see that the, their mission here, they share about how much success they've had. So the first Chinese one mission was in 2007. They have here the Chinese 5 that was launched in 2020. This is the one that brought back 1.7 kilogram of lunar SORA. It's amazing because we had not gotten any lunar soil for the last for more than 40 years even 50 years because that's when the last apollo mission had been on the moon so everybody was excited about that and during my research i noticed that the chen he 5 was a mission they were hoping it would go they also had a backup mission which was the chen he 6 and because the chen he 5 worked nicely they still launched the um, Chang'e 6 mission, there it is, uh, to continue their research since they had it. So I'm quite proud of what they are doing, especially that they have a drill to go at uh, two meter deep. I think that's quite nice. Now the mission is 53 days, so that means that by the end of June, June 25th or so, we should be able to get some resources from them. So that's quite exciting, and I'm sure that we'll learn a lot from their research team. Uh, let's see, let's see. So on, so here they have a French instrument called DORN to look at radon. They also have an instrument from Italy. Uh, here it's about the laser retro reflector investigation. So sending uh, information through laser because keeping in mind that in the last couple of years, there's been a lot of use of laser for communication. So instead of using a radio wave, we're using laser much more a much faster way to communicate and it is exciting we have the swedish here that they have a negative ions on lunar surface due to solar wind indeed and from pakistan we have here uh, a two optical camera to look at the, the lunar magne magnetic field very nice i had not noticed that and so here very good international 
teamwork, and it is quite good. So this is what's happening from China. The other one that is happening this week is uh, Boeing is sending two astronauts in space with their Starliner, st Starliner, liner, there you go, project. So let's see. I have here, and I'm going to put here the link into the comments below, just in case you want to have a quick look. So Boeing has some communication for the journalists. So let's see if I can go all the way to the top. So here, Boeing has a module that is like this, very similar to what the Artemis project is with a capsule for astronauts. So the whole idea is to be able to do the launch. And the launch is May 6th. That means it's tomorrow. So lots of things happening uh, uh, this week. It's probably a great launch window for, for them. So let's see what we have. Let's see if I can reload this one so that I can see all the pages with you. Perfect. I wanted to see this one. So similar to what the Artemis project will be, there's a, here a living space for the astronauts. There's a heat shield and some uh, service module. But the amazing thing is that we will, it, the plan is to send two astronauts. They've been doing a lot of work. I know that in the, in the past years, SpaceX has won the initial race, but Boeing and Amazon have been working on their own rockets and system. So here I can see, so here's the, the rocket. So we have here the module called the CST-100 Starliner. And then we have here the booster that is going to be used tomorrow. With respect to the astronaut being sent, we have Derry Butch Wilmore. He has been, is a veteran, native veteran here working for Boeing. So you'll see that some of the astronauts working at NASA uh, and other space agency have retired from those, but they're still very knowledgeable. So we have this pilot here going into space and they're going to stay one week in the, um, the space station, the International Space Station to do some work. And the other person that will be going is uh, Sunita Williams. Sunita is another pilot uh, that will go and stay one week also on the International Space Station, knowing that it will be her third visit. Uh, tons of hours in space. She did some spacewalk as well when uh, she did some repairs of the space station in the past. And they say here that here are the two space mission expeditions 1415 and 3233. Knowing that uh, she's got that uh, she did, uh, let's see, it was uh, a spacewalk. So more than four hours of uh, space work. Quite amazing. And there's a third person. So Mike Fink. Mike here is a backup crew member, just in case something happens. We hope that uh, it won't be necessary, but it's always good to have uh, backups. So here, as you can see, they went into space between 2004 and 2011. So they are veteran astronauts, but it's not because they are older that they cannot contribute and go to the space station. So here, this is quite exciting. And I'm gonna put in the link below the fact that uh, NASA will show the the, um, the mission launch tomorrow and as you could see may 6 at 6 30 pm so i think it'll be exciting i can't wait to see that and these are the topics about space exploration so we have china that's doing great things and we have uh, boring doing great things as well the more players that there is the more we can get data it's amazing for scientists that are staying on the ground and learning much from uh, what they Correct. On this, if you enjoyed this video, I'm going to put here another link about space exploration. I'll see you there.